Hi, I'm Morgan Jaremus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm here today with Roxanne St. Clair, who we all, of course, know as a fabulous romantic suspense author. You. you have a couple of series that have really touched readers with their, their action pack, but they have so much heart to them. And of course, I'm talking Bullet Catchers for me yes. is, is the one. But you actually have, you have two series for romantic suspense that you're really known for. I do. Yeah, and the other one is The Angelinos, right? The Guardian right? Angelinos, yes. yes. Which is actually a spinoff from The Bullet Catchers. So it's they all kind of work together. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, they don't actually work together. The Bullet Catchers is a 10-book series about a very elite group of bodyguards and very high-end, sophisticated equipment. They had everything at their disposal. When I wrote The Guardian Angelinos, I wanted to do sort of a low-end, nitty-gritty, family-run organization, a big Italian family. I'm married to an Italian, so it was easy to sort of you know what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, incorporate the food and the fun and the family into all the danger and the romance. So it was tremendously fun. I loved writing both those series. But I am taking a slight departure. I know. I'm <laughs> so excited. I just heard about your new series. It's the Barefoot Bay series. Barefoot Bay series. And it is contemporary, which, yeah. of course, you write contemporary, but this is, you kind of, you let go a little bit of the, the action, the guns. Absolutely. No dead bodies. No dead bodies. No surprise <laughs> villains, um, which was a challenge because that really is what I've been writing. I have written uh, Harlequin Desires, mm -hmm. uh, Silhouette Desires in the past, so I'm not completely unfamiliar with the contemporary genre, but to write a big 100,000 uh, word contemporary was emotional. Yeah. There's no dead body and there's no surprise villain and there's no turning to the danger and the action and the thrill. All of that has to be there, that same level of tension and conflict and suspense, but it's more emotional. Right. It's, a, it's an internal yes, issue that the characters... And these books all turned out to be very emotional. I just finished the second one and I and I jokingly said I'm going to give Kleenex instead of bookmarks <laughs> because it's a weeper. Um, this one's... They're, they're, yeah, let's see. This first this one. This is Barefoot in the Sand. It's the first book. It comes out April 24th, and um, May 1st is the full full release. Barefoot in the Rain, Barefoot in the Sun, and Barefoot by the Sea are the four barefoot titles. And they, they take place on a fictional island off the coast of Florida, the west coast of Florida, called Mimosa Key, in an inlet called Barefoot Bay. The first book opens with a hurricane brushing the island and wiping out the main character's home. She has a lot of property right on the water, an old, old house that her grandfather built, and it's gone. And she has to start over, and it's really a story of finding optimism in the rubble and, and love with a younger guy. <laughs> well, no, and, and I, I, I really I really like the idea that, that she lost everything. She has to rebuild. She's a single mother, She's and so this mother. adds a whole other layer to the rebuilding because she also has to stay very positive mm -hmm. for a child. And, and I love the idea because there's not a reader out there that's not going to be able to relate that to something that happened within their own lives where I, I so. lost a job or I lost a you know, a uh, uh, loved one or, and I had to start from scratch or I had to reinvent myself or at least reinvent the way I felt about things and my attitude to make sure that I can make that next step in my life. That's, and that's, that's Lacey. It. That's, that's Lacey. It. And she is all about reinventing herself. But her problem is she's an excuse maker. Her whole life she's had a reason why she couldn't do something. And now she is forced. And of course the man who comes into her life doesn't know the meaning of the word can't. And he's the architect and he's like, you're building a little bed and breakfast? No, 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 no. We're building a resort. So he takes her to this level of and challenges her physically, emotionally, professionally, and it's been really, really wonderful to write the book. I had a great time. And I, I had a lot of experience because I lost my home in a hurricane. So I know exactly what it feels like to come home and not recognize anything. Broken Waterford crystal, wedding presents, everything you ever had in your life. And you think, Where, what do I do? How do I start over? Over again and I did and I, I, I was four weeks pregnant at the time with a baby that was very hard to conceive and that's what I clung to I just said I'm gonna get through this and I remember that feeling and it was fun to put it into the book I really like that you have an emotional experience because that that is really going to come through. And I just want to tell everyone out there, the first in the series, four and a half stars at RT. Oh, we absolutely yes. loved it. It was Thank an you. absolutely must read. And also, also something that the reviewer was talking about, a scorcher. It, it is a sexy it's book. It's a sexy book. Well, I write a sexy book. Yeah. You know, I can't, I, I am there. Maybe no dead bodies, but there's definitely <laughs> sex in unusual places. In this case, the Gulf of Mexico. Um, I like, I like to write a sexy book. I like 
take a lot of a lot of heat. And the hero in this book, oh, he was He's one Clay, of my right? favorites. Yes, Clay, Clay Walker. Um, he uh, is younger than the heroine by about seven, seven or eight years, six or seven years, and not not a huge amount, but enough that it made her nervous. And he is a um, architect, and she's a single mom, and he just. Sweeps. sweeps her off her feet and right into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and stuff happens. <laughs> well, I'm going to change. I'm going to completely change gears a little okay, bit okay. because you have another project that this summer we're very much looking oh, forward so to. I'm excited about This is another departure for me. You have a young adult novel that's going to be coming out and it has a touch of paranormal to it, which is something that, that is also a little bit new, new for you. for me, yes. I know. I'm stretching my creative wings. My muse said, go do something different this year and it's been really it was last year was a year of trying completely new things and it was wonderful I had an idea actually my daughter had an idea for a YA she didn't realize it was an idea she asked me a question Oh, too, uh, too long a story to tell you on tape. She just asked me one question. And it was one of those, I was driving in the car the next day, and it was a lightning bolt of this is a book, a whole book. It came to me in a flash. And I am a, a YA reader. I've been a closet YA reader for as long as I can remember. I don't think, I can't remember a time when I wasn't reading YAs. Mm -hmm. And they just keep getting better and better. I mean, the market is just mm -hmm. rich with fabulous emotional stories. I love first love. And I love to experience teenagers, but I never thought I I would write one. I didn't really think I had the voice for it. And then as my children became teenagers and I was surrounded by teenagers, I got the voice for it because I heard them talk morning, noon, and night. There's always big boys traipsing through my house. So I had this idea and I wrote up a synopsis and I wrote a few pages and I sent it to my agent and I expected her to say, no, no, no. Just settle down and write what you're supposed to be writing. And she said, oh, my heavens, I love this. <laughs> so we sold it to Random House. It comes mm -hmm. out in hardcover in July. And the best part is it's been optioned for film. Don't tell anybody this, but I hear Selena Gomez is reading right now. We don't know where it's going, but don't tell anybody. Don't tell that. anyone. <laughs> but I mean, how exciting! Now, what's the title? What did you What did you name the book? The title is Don't You Wish. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a little picture. I'm gonna zoom in Ooh, on the bookmark. Yes. But I am gonna s send say this with a caveat. The cover has changed just recently, so it's a little bit different. But it still has that sort of very iconic looking um, cover face on the cover. It's about a uh, very average subpar in, uh, teenage girl who is very very unhappy who learns in the early in the book that her mother's old boyfriend is a multi gazillionaire who lives in a house that is featured in architectural digest and her mother is kind of bemoaning her sorry choice in life because <laughs> look where I could have lived if I had married this guy. And her father is a wacky inventor. And that day they come home from having seen the magazine in the store and her father has invented this picture perfect mirror that if you stand in front of it, you can it can make take away pounds and change your face and make you look wonderful and make you look like your life is perfect. Mother doesn't like it, breaks the mirror. The little girl the teenage girl gets a piece of glass and through science it's actually not paranormal it's a parallel universe story she gets transported to another universe and she wakes up and she's living in that house and her mother in this parallel universe married that man and she on the outside is the life living a perfect life she is beautiful rich uh, popular but that's not all it's cracked up to be and she learns that in a classic tale of learning that the grass is not always greener and don't be careful what you wish for then she has to figure out how she got there and if she can go back and there's a wonderful sweet love story and it explores some themes that I really really have always been intrigued by the what if theme and I think teenagers are often intrigued by that so I'm very excited about the book well, I have to ask, has your has your uh, children read the book yet? Because oh, they're teens. My, they both have read the book, and um, just for the record, my son keeps saying, Victoria Justice, Victoria Justice for the lead. <laughs> uh, I want to beat her, Mom. Um, I love my that. daughter, of course, has read it many times, um, and she, you know, made, every once in a while she'd say, eh, no, we don't really say that. So she, you know, I definitely have a, a real teen reader, and it's dedicated to her, and uh, the book would not have happened without her. She really asked the question that made me think about it all. So can you give us fun. can you give us the question? What's what was the Well, it was 
Well, the truth of the matter was I was reading the art and architectural digest and looking at this 28,000 square foot house that's owned by an ex-boyfriend of mine. Oh, so we got another little bit of a true story or, or based I on. I at it and I thought, oh, wow, he's done really well. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not in a situation where I, you know, my husband's a wacky inventor. He's a chef, which is even better. Um, but my daughter happened to walk in on into my office and I showed her this and I said, you know, if I'd have married this guy, would be living here. Ha ha. You know, as a joke. Right. Well, she just... <gasps> Well, I could be living, why didn't you marry him? I could be living in that house. And I said, well, you wouldn't be you if I married him. You'd be some other guy's daughter, but you wouldn't be you. And she said to me, well, wouldn't I have the same soul? And I said, well, you know, isn't it bedtime? <laughs> I didn't know how to answer that. But when I contemplated it the next day, I thought, what a great story. If, if the teenager went to the new universe and she had all the exterior trappings of perfection, but inside she's a different girl than she's a different girl. So she has to make a lot of moral decisions mm -hmm. that don't sit well with her soul. And ultimately she has to decide if or you know if she should go home. Wow. So it's a fun book. It's a it's it was a great departure for me. It was a palate cleanser from all the romantic suspense. Mm -hmm. Both of these books were really good for me creatively. I've had a good time. That doesn't mean I won't ever write romantic suspense again. That was my very next question. <laughs> I anticipated that. <laughs> because I mean, obviously these sound fantastic and we're definitely going to be reviewing them in the magazine, so check for awesome. that. But I also want to ask do we have another series in Romantic Suspense going around in that? Yes. Yeah? Yes. yes. So yes, can you do. can you give me a little... Well, I'll just say one word, four okay. letters, Gabe. I have a lot of readers asking for, for Gabe Rossi's yeah. book from the Guardian Angelinos, and I would love him to really upset the apple cart and work for the bullet catchers. So somehow combining the two series and maybe even starting a third one that spins off one more time. How that will be published, when that will be published, I'm not sure. I'm completely booked with contracted books through 2013 and I'm happy to be in that position but I really I really can't leave romantic suspense. You heard it here first people. <laughs> We did. Gabe, we, we might be seeing Gabe, hopefully yes. soon. Oh, there's no might. I have to write Gabe's story. He haunts me. And that and, and that's really in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> it's really nice to wake up to Gabe in the middle of the night. Yeah. No, he's a great character and and I, I really think that, that he deserves his love story. So I will write that eventually. Excellent. Well thank you so much oh, for thank meeting you for with me. Thank you for knowing so much about my books. Great interview. <laughs>